everybody. This is Donna Bancroft, and I'm the librarian here at Beale University. Today we're going to talk about a database called Academic Search Complete, and I'm going to show you how to find it and how to search on it. So if you go to your Canvas login and fill out all the information, click on Login. And you'll note from the Courses menu it says student and library resources. If I click right here, you'll see it gives me a whole bunch of um, places to take a look at um, resources. I'm going to click on the database and search engines right here. And you'll see it says EBSCO host. When I click on that, there's a whole list of databases that are available for you. And the second one down is called Academic Search Complete, and it's a large generalized database, and I often recommend people start out with a, a larger database when you're doing your research. And again, you can narrow it down to um, something a little more specific if for perhaps you're in a business class or communications or criminal justice. You can um, use one of these more specific databases, but today we're just going to take a look at this larger generalized database. If I click right here, you'll see that it'll ask you to log in again, and here's all the information you're going to need to do that with. It's not your student ID. The user ID for this database is B-E-A-L-U, and the password is capital B, at sign, N-G-O-R, capital M, capital E. And just as a tip, please note that the zero and the password is the number zero and not the letter zero. But you may not even have to remember that because what I usually do is I will just highlight this and cut and paste it. So I do control C. And then when I click on the databases, all I have to remember is the B E A L U. And then when I go to the password, I just do control V and it pastes it right in. I click on sign in. And here's the database. And if you've looked at the CINAHL video, it's the same format, but you'll see it's just a, a different title of a different database. The CINAHL databases are more specific to healthcare. So I'm going to put in, um, well, let me just talk a little bit about this front page. You might want to initially uh, limit it right away to full text. This means that you'll be able to either print or email yourself the full text article that you're going to search for. And also, you may have some classes that you're only required to use peer-reviewed material, and you can narrow for that right away. I'm not going to click this because not every class needs it, but that's where that limit button is if that is a requirement of your class. So I'm going to come up here and just do an initial search, and I'm going to put in animal, animal rights. And you'll see on the drop-down menu, it gives me lots of different options, um, animal rights movement, animal rights in the United States, because as we know, um, there are animal rights um, activists in, throughout the entire world. Um, I'm just going to go with the generalized one right here for animal rights and do a search. I hit this button and you'll see I have a list of journal of journals or journal articles, excuse me. And right now as it stands I have 8361 articles, which is a lot. So we could narrow it down by putting in the United States and redoing our search. And now I'm down to 1,750. So that's quite the difference in the amount of hits that I got. Um, another way to narrow it down a little bit further is you'll see that these articles are from 1943 to the present and it could be that you would use an older article like that if you were doing sort of the history of animal rights in the United States, just to give you a perspective on the, um, you know, an, an older type of article. But what I'm going to do right now is sort of slide this bar up so that I'm going to go up to about 2015. And you'll see it automatically will update. 
and now I'm down to just 658 articles. So these are sort of some tips on how to narrow down your searches. And you'll see that the most recent ones often um, come up to the very top. So this one was published in June of 2022. So I'm going to just click on the title of the article. And you'll see from the next page, it gives me all the information that I'll need to, to know if this is really something that um, I'm really going to be interested in. So you'll see it gives me the, the title of the article, the authors, and the source, which is the journal that it's published in. And then if you come down here, it gives you a little abstract. And the abstract is really just an overall view of what the article is about. And these can be very helpful um, in that, it, you know, if you read the abstract, it may give you an idea that it's not something that you want to um, use in your research. And that is a real nice time-saving feature instead of having to read the entire article. Um, this one is in particular is 10 pages. So say you did read the abstract and it was something that you wanted to take a look at. If you come over here to the left and click on PDF full text, you'll see that the entire article will come up. It just takes a couple of seconds. And this is exactly what the article would look like in the journal. So it gives you all the information that you'll need. And of course it is 10 pages. So if it was something that you thought you might want to use in your research, there's a way to email this to yourself. So if you see this link right here and you click on it, it gives you an opportunity to put in your email address and you can click on send but before you do that here's a great tip if you come over here where it says include when sending the citation format and you click on the drop down menu we use the APA 7th edition so if I click on that and I click on send it'll give me a oh I have to put my email in and I click on send and it just gives me a confirmation and I can continue. So what it's going to do is send me the entire article and it's going to send me the citation which should appear at the top of your email in APA format. So this is a great tip. Um, another thing is if you opt to not email it to yourself there's another way to find out what the correct citation is by clicking on Oh, see, see, and I just got an email confirmation that it is coming through my email. So that's always another good thing to know. If I click over here on this, um, what looks like a little piece of paper right here, you'll see it says citation format. And as I come down, a couple of three, it gives me the APA 7th edition. And this is exactly what you'll need for your references. So, you know, feel free to just cut and paste that and put that into your... Um, the end of your paper in your reference list or your uh, citation list. So that's really how easy that can be. So let's see. I'm going to go back to the result list, which is the original list that we selected that article from. And you'll see, again, we have 658. And um, so this is just a good way on how to find information for your research and how to cite it and how to get it to you. So again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at dbancroft, B-A-N-C-R-O-F-T, at bl.edu. Thanks so much.